Hello there, welcome to part 9 of Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds. There's been many more great finds made all around the world and you're going to see some of them in this video. There are of course tens of thousands more which are not in this video. So if you want to make some for yourself, get out there metal detecting. And if you want to submit a video for this series, stay tuned because at the end there's going to be details on how you can do that. Now when I was on my way home from work this afternoon, I noticed something going on in the field which made me think that's connected wholeheartedly to metal detecting. Now over there you can see a big pile of muck. That's cow muck and straw. Now that's been cleared out of a big barn very recently with tractors and trailers carted down here stored in a pile and that's going to be spread on the fields. And once the muck spreader turns up there's going to be a tractor drive into that pile of muck and load up the muck spreader the muck spreader is then going to drive out into the field and chuck the muck all over the fields. And in that muck, there's going to be the odd coin, there's going to be the odd crushed tin can, there's going to be all sorts of human muck, waste, things that people have lost. And although I can pretty much guarantee 99.9% .9 of the modern stuff that gets chucked out by the muck spreader won't be worth keeping, You've got to bear in mind that this process of bringing the animals in from the fields into big barns or in the olden days underneath houses to provide warmth and in places like Europe which is very good for metal detecting a lot of history that practice has been going on for centuries so now the animals are brought into a big barn which is separate from the farm years and years ago people would live not so much a hunter-gatherer existence but it would be subsistence farming they would bring their own personal cattle in their own sheep under the houses or very close to the houses they would use the heat from those animals to warm themselves they would live above them all the muck from those animals would then be taken out put into a big midden that would be spread on the fields take this thing behind me as an example above here is my log cabin. That's where I have an office. I go in there, I've got a wood burning stove, I do my internet based work in there. Underneath here, if I was living centuries ago, obviously I wouldn't have the internet. I would be using that as my house. And in the winter, the animals would be using under there for shelter. I'd be tending to those animals, I'd be dropping things out my pockets amongst those animals taking their muck out and in the spring spreading it all around the local fields and that's why there's so much stuff to find in the fields of Europe there is of course things people have just dropped when they've been out if you get a flat piece of land next to a river it'll have been used for picnics and get-togethers for centuries same with bank sides that have been used for sledging hilltops for lookouts clearings in woods they'll have all been used for centuries but in fields, where the muck spread on the fields, that's why there's such a good range of stuff to find. Now without further ado, let's see some of that stuff. Welcome to part 9. Guys, Metal Detecting Palmer here. This is my entry for Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds by Pongoru. The thing that you can see on my hand is an 18 karat gold necklace which is older than 50 years because the pendant is an old style Mallorcan cross. This was found at about 3.5 inches in the woods of Mallorca with the Garrett Ace 250. It's worth about 75 euros in gold weight and it's my first gold. Well, since then I didn't find any gold either, but it's still my first gold. So, if you want to check out my channel, feel free to do so. And, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Hello everybody, my name is John. My YouTube name is JetskiJohn2006. I found this item about two weeks ago in Cheshire, which was my second signal of the day. And when I cleaned it when I got home, I couldn't believe what it was. It's an intaglio seal, 
possibly about 18th century uh, so later on I made a copy of the seal with some blue tack and this is what it come out like I found it about three or four inches with the Garrett Ace 250 thanks for watching and please check out my group on Facebook called History Hunters Hey Pond Guru, this is Biggest Diggest out of Connecticut uh, coming to you for Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds number 9 um, found this British Halfpenny 1773 I believe George III about 200 yards away from my house found with a Garrett AT Gold Hello, this is a video for Pongoro's uh, Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds. I found this on pasture with a Maplin's Advanced, apparently, um, cheapo metal detector. It was about four inches deep uh, and it appears to be a key of some kind, although here and here there is no evidence of anything ever being attached to it, so I'm wondering if it is actually some kind of wrench. It appears sorry that there that it's brass and it's been painted. Um, my YouTube channel name is Mr. Phil the Mole. There isn't any more uh, metal detecting videos on there as this is my first find. Thanks for watching. Hi everybody, this is Mark from the Netherlands. My YouTube channel is 1979MDG. And this is my next entry. It's a Roman coin. Um, the Emperor is Domitian and it's uh, about 78 uh, AD. It's a bronze coin. Uh, founded on a field, a plough field. Um, and uh, what made it so special is that in the, in uh, my region there aren't aren't uh, any Romans. They went to uh, uh, to Utrecht, the Rhine, uh, but not not above. Um, so um, that makes it very special. Here's another find. I think it's a Roman lead. Little figurine, but all right. But would like someone to identify it for me. I think it might be older than Roman, but I doubt it. It's lead. It's prudent made. This was four inches deep on a foul field. With the Drain on Inconsure. Now it is. It's him. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Richard, also known as Pond Guru. This is my channel, this is my video, and this is my find. I actually made this years and years ago. Maybe 15, 20 years ago, I was down the river. I was out with a very old C scope metal detector. Didn't find anything of use at all. But this was perched on the top of a mole hill. The mole had obviously dug it out of the ground, but this looked like someone had just placed it on top of the mole hill. And this is a 1923 50 million mark coin. With a very Jewish looking fella on the back there. And this coin is such a high denomination because it's in a time after the First World War the economy wasn't doing too good in Germany and there was hyperinflation so this was worth pretty much nothing even though it's 50 million marks if you fast forward that to 1980 50 million marks you could probably retire on that unfortunately now you can't retire on this it's worth maybe 10 15 quid but it's a very nice find Hello everybody, it's uh, Ash and Aya from YouTube. Uh, my find of the month this month is a James I Sixpence, dated 1605. I uh, found this last week. Uh, it was on pasture. I uh, found with the Technetics T2. 
approximately two inches down. It's in absolutely lovely condition and uh, certainly my find of the month. Hey guys, this is Mini Dude here, and this is um, um, a video for the Pawn Guru's uh, worldwide metal detecting finds. Um, hopefully, number nine. This is a button I found. I'm not sure exactly how old it is or where it's from. That's why I'm posting it. So maybe some, one of you will know where or when it's from. It has the Queen's Crown on it, and about all I know it was that, and that it's probably late Victorian. Plus it's either white brass or bronze. But yep, this is for Pawn Guru's metal, worldwide metal detecting finds. Mini Dude 4321 is my channel. But Hello there, this is Mick. My YouTube username is Mick Finders Keepers, and what you're looking at is a 9 karat gold ring found with a Garrett Ace 250 using a DD coil, and it was about 4.5 inches down in a field in Liverpool. It weighs 6.7 grams. As you can see, it's a lovely buckle design. The date letter inside I've had confirmed by a jeweller is 1817 so this ring is almost 200 years old if you want to see me dig it live check out my channel Mick Finders Keepers now that I'm sitting editing this in bed that's part 9 there on the computer and I've just remembered that thus far I've forgotten to include a Facebook group. It's actually been sent to me by Jetski John 2006 who's got an entry in this episode and his Facebook group is called History Hunters. There's a link for it in the video description. And one organization that I would like to mention is Northumbrian Search Society. They're based out of Durham in northeast England. I was at Durham Civic Centre a week ago and they had a, like a historical event there Northumbrian Search Society was there and they found some cracking stuff on their hunts so if you're anywhere near Durham and you want to join a good club they've obviously got some really good land to hunt on check them out again link to their site is in the video description now here's a few finds that have been made by people who don't have a YouTube channel but they've been in touch with me and wanted me to show you their finds one of them Needs identify. In fact, one of them, two of them, two of them need identifying. One of them is a rock of some sort, which gave a very good signal in the sea, and the guy was using a waterproof metal detector. He found that. He's just wanting to know if there's any reason why he would pick up that certain rock, if anybody's familiar with that. And the other one was a Russian fella living in the UK, in the northwest, and on the banks of a river. He found some interesting metal. Hi guys, um, this isn't a coin or anything. This is just a very strange rock I found in about 15 feet of water off an island in the Caribbean um, with my Infinium LS. Um, if anybody has any idea what it can be, um, please let Pong Guru know. You can contact me. Um, it has a lot of sparkly bits inside. I don't think you, you might be able to see them flickering there. Um, that's it. Thank you. Bye. Hi, my name is Constantine. I would like to show you some find which I found a couple of days ago. Metal detected in Lancashire on the river bank. I don't know what it is, but maybe somebody can help me. Thank you very much. Bye. And the third one is some lovely Roman artifacts found in Germany. Hello, here are two of my best Roman finds. Uh, I made it uh, last year on a, on a fresh uh, plucked field here in uh, Germany, Rhineland area. Uh, first one is a satyr, 
Roman uh, Roman dated uh, in the second se century and I uh, think it's from a uh, Roman uh, furniture uh, application as you can see very very nice bronze satyr a god and uh, the second great find is a, a somorphic uh, fibula uh, it looks like a hippocampus hippocampi very very nice thank you very much a big thank you to everybody who submitted a video for this episode of worldwide metal detecting finds if you want to send one of your finds to me to include in part 10 then do so by following the instructions which are about to follow now I have actually had a couple of people say is there any chance we can send videos of bottles and other things that have been found this really is a metal detecting finds video but if you want to include finds that you've made without a metal detector and they're interesting then be my guest send them to me no problem at all I'll include them in upcoming episodes so just to reiterate they don't have to be metal detecting finds any nice interesting finds you've made when you've been out and it's kind of connected bottle digging that sort of thing the sort of thing that metal detectorists would enjoy seeing feel free to send them no problem one more thing to mention before I sign off deep digger Dan I know he hasn't been a part of this series he's got his own stuff going on but about three or four days ago his subscriber total flew past mine so I would just like to wish him the best of luck with his channel I know he puts a lot of effort into it and his videos are great as well very entertaining so great luck deep digger Dan well done on surpassing my subscribers and it won't be long before you flying past me on the views as well although you've got a bit to go there's a target for you thank you very much for tuning in again I hope to see you in part 10 feel free to send me any videos and check out the channels of everybody who's sent a video for this episode subscribe to them as well it'll really help them out thanks for watching try that again Thanks very much for watching. See you next time. huge carp in my pond. I'm gonna try and get a video of him. There he is. Yeah. Look at him hoovering the pellets up. What a pig. Those of you who regularly watch my videos may notice something. I've had my teeth done. I now have fantastic teeth for an Englishman. <laughs>